Lowcoder is a web design tool and a low code platform combined. It's a powerful tool for creating custom external and internal tools and applications. They also have a marketplace that allows users to access publicly shared apps as well. And the best part is that it's actually fully open source, so there's no hidden paywalls. So in this video, I wanna show you the interface of the app builder itself, also how it handles data, how it has that kind of backend piece, and finally talk a little bit about why it's open source and what that means for pricing. So when you first log into Locoder, and I will link it below, it's locoder.cloud, you will enter the admin area. This is going to be where you can see your profile, news, the marketplace, that's where you can go and look at other people's apps, your apps, which is where you will spend the majority of your time, in um, query library and data sources, that is also within the app itself. So I'm going to avoid those and then settings and then also trash. So it's a pretty simple interface for the admin area, but this is where you're gonna be playing around most. Um, so once you're in your app section, so you click this and you're in your app section, you click new and there's a bunch of different options here. So there's app, module, navigation. Now there are some slight differences here. So an app is mostly what you're gonna be playing around with because it's an app builder, right? So the module underneath here is actually like an app that you wanna reuse, like a component you reuse quite a bit on other apps. So if you find yourself using the same components over and over and over on different applications, then you might wanna consider building a module so you can drag and drop that into each app. So it makes it a little bit easier. Navigation is just a navigation sidebar for your individual apps. So if you have all these apps and you wanna combine them into one navigation so you can click through the apps, that's what navigation is for. But let's focus on just a very simple application so I can show you kind of what the interface looks like. What you wanna do from here is actually click this new app button if you wanna build an application. So I already have one already set up. Now I didn't do anything with it. So just pretend I click new app and this is what it will look like. So if you create a new application, it should look something like this. The name that you give your new application is going to be called in this left-hand corner up here. So this is gonna be test app. That's just what I named it for this YouTube video. Now I recommend doing a layout because if you do both, it's a little overwhelming with a lot of information. So just stick with layout when you're first kind of playing around with it. The first thing you'll kind of notice is that you have all these insert options over here. What I think is cool is Locoder actually puts your components by usage, right? So what you're going to use the components for. So project management components are grouped together. Document and file management are grouped together. So that's what I kind of like about how Locoder kind of puts your components out for you, but it's gonna be a drag and drop. So you can see we're in the insert. Now, if you click properties, there's gonna be no properties because we haven't selected a component for you to edit the properties for. So if we go back to insert, you can take a look. If you expand one of these, you can see, okay, here's a table, calendar, timer, hill chart, Kanban board, all kinds of stuff. And you just drag and drop it into this canvas area. So let's start by making just a very basic, kind of classic project management application. Let's say it's like an internal application that you wanna use within your company. So what you're gonna do is actually go to layout and navigation, and I just recommend putting everything in a container because it just keeps it clean. So just drag and drop, you can see how easy that is, literally a drag and drop. I'm gonna go ahead and expand it because I want my project dashboard to be big. <laughs> So go ahead and expand that. Now you can see you're in the container and it jumped you over to this properties tab, right? So you could unselect this, the header, and then the header disappears, right? Show body, body disappears. You can show a footer. And then you can drag and drop components directly onto this container. Now you can change up the style. So if you can see all these extra stuff that you can kind of add and customize. But let's go ahead into insert. So we'll go back and we're gonna go pick up more components and drag them on here. So if we go to project management, let's just do a classic table, for example. So I could drag this in. Now notice it kind you can kind of see, you can put it outside the container, you could put it inside, you can kind of do whatever you want. So if I drag this in here and just drop it, and then you can go ahead and expand this out and it's starting to look pretty good. And that's what I kind of like about Locoder is the styling is actually like baseline good. 
I feel like some of the other applications I use, I drop a table in there and it looks so bad. It's like, you have to start from scratch. Where this, the stylings actually starts out pretty good, but you can come in here and check out these and customize the style, right? So you can come out here and change the border color and some of the other style kind of components. Um, so I'm gonna rename this to Project Management Dashboard. So again, if you click something, so if you click container, properties of that container, you click the container title, there's properties of that container title. So we can go ahead and change this to Project Management Dashboard and it auto updates here. So it's starting to look pretty good, but let's go ahead and add some more components so you can get a feel for what you can add to this application. Let's go ahead and add a Kanban board because that sounds fun. So go ahead and drag and drop. And again, same thing, it's very easy to use. Just drag and drop, make it the same size, right? Let's add, and, and again, you can customize the style on every single component. Let's go back and click something else. Let's do a calendar for fun, because it's like, what is a project management dashboard without a calendar? So if we go ahead and expand that, and then with like three clicks, we have a pretty decent looking project management dashboard, right? We've got a calendar, it looks really nice, it's giving kind of Google vibes. We have a Kanban board, and we have a table, right? So, so far it's like, really easy to use. It's drag and drop. Again, you can go into the properties and you can you can click something and customize it to whatever you want it to look like. It's very, very easy to use. You saw within a couple minutes, we just set up a complete dashboard. It actually looks pretty decent. Then you can go ahead and share it. You can also add additional components. You could continue to just build on top of this one. The other cool thing that I saw was it, we're in the component section right here, right? But if we go to the extension section, any of the modules that you previously built, I kind of mentioned what a module was. It's where you can reuse the same kind of app, like a smaller app inside other apps. So you could drag and drop a, a module that you use or you built separately into a bunch of different apps. So you could reuse that app or that module and pull it into your application, which I find is very cool. So if you see yourself reusing a bunch, like let's say you, reuse this component a lot, you can turn it into a module or create it as a module and then it will all show up in this side panel here and you just drag and drop into your applications. So you wanna think about how, what your building blocks of your applications are. And if you're reusing any of the same kind of grouping of components, then make that a module. And then again, you can just drag and drop. It's very easy to do. Now that we have a good understanding of how the layout is, with this section, I want to show you the both section, which shows the logic and the layout. So it makes the layout a little bit smaller, but don't let this scare you. It's not, it's not as crazy as it looks. Now it's very simple. What's cool about these active component section is that it's kind of like a tree. So you can see within your container one, what other components are in there. So I really like this because it allows you to see kind of holistically what your app is built out of. Um, so that is kind of what this is for. And then uh, there are global variables, but don't let that, you know, scare you and data queries, which we'll go over in a minute. Now you can also go into general app settings. So this has your title description, kind of category, other things like general settings. And then we have themes, which I find very useful. You can actually select a theme that you've pre-made in the admin area, which I will show you how to make a theme there or you can create it directly in here. It's kind of up to you. And then there is like a custom JavaScript situation and then also layers as well. But the themes is the one I really wanna show you. So if you leave out of this, this is the kind of an app editor. If you leave out of this and go to the, ad, and go to the admin editor, then you can set up custom themes there and it's kind of cool. So now we are in the admin editor, right? So we were in the app editor, now we're in the admin center. So if we go down to settings here, this is where you can add your users and workspaces, but there's also a little theme section here. And I just created a test theme or a team test, right? So you can create a theme here. You could also create it back in the, the actual app itself. But what's cool about this, if you go into edit, 
and you scroll all the way down, and let me zoom out a little bit, scroll all the way down, you have, you know, canvas settings and stuff like that, but I liked this section where you can do component templates. So you can actually customize the components, so then when you drag and drop them, you have the exact way that you kind of set it up, your theme settings and stuff. So if we can just do um, like a text display. So if I just click this guy, you can come in here and change all these settings and then click save. And then this is part of your kind of template and theme. So when you go to make your app, it looks exactly the way you want it. You don't have to constantly be changing the settings. Now, before we move on to data, I do want to show you one really cool thing that I haven't seen a lot of other applications like this do. And so let's go to your apps. Um, let's go in here. And this is a module. Now this is something cool because you can basically create your own Teams meeting or your own Zoom. So if we go ahead and click this, so this is just a module. So let's go ahead and look inside here and see kind of what it looks like to have your own, set up your own team thing. So let's do layout, right? So this is in the component section that is um, in meeting and collaboration. So these are components that I don't really see a lot of people have in other kind of competitors of Locoder. So the sh camera stream, avatar, share screen, like this is an actual call button. So if I click this button, it will show my face and I will be in a call. So your applications can be like a Teams meeting as well. Like you can call into the meeting within the app itself. It's very unique, very cool. So if I click this button right here, it will turn on my camera and you can see, you can see a little lights in the, in the background or whatever, but it's kind of crazy. So then you can click this end call and it's like live in your application. So you can just drag and drop these kind of components and it's like, you can actually build in a Teams call into your application to like review something. So there's a Google Doc down here as well. So it's very unique, something I don't see often. That's why I wanted to share it because this is just very different than some of the application builders that I've seen before. Okay, so enough about the front end. Let's talk about how this handles data and how kind of more of the back end works. So if you're in the admin center, right? So the the admin part of the application, so you're not inside an app, there are query libraries and data sources. Now I recommend just setting it up in the application itself because it'll just make more sense. So if we go inside our test app and we can go ahead and get rid of everything because I just want to show you this, how kind of the, how the data is set up, we can actually go into um, this section. We want both because we want the logic because that's how we're going to set up the data queries. So what's interesting here is you can go in here and click new and you have all these different options for data queries, right? So it says code recently used or your data sources. So if I want to set up a data source, so you need a data source and a data query, right? The source is like the actual database. You need to like link the database, connect to it. Query is actually querying the database that you just linked to it. So hopefully that makes sense. So you're going to come down here and you can click plus new data source. So you're going to go ahead and click here and see all these different options. These are all the different options that you could connect to. It's like, it's kind of crazy. There's a lot of different options. So you should be able to find the thing that you're looking for. You can do Google Sheets to MariaDB to Postgres. So there's a bunch of different options. So what I'm going to do is actually connect to a Postgres SQL database. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And now you have this kind of form that you will fill out. So I've entered all my information, right, for this database. Now what you're gonna go ahead and do is just click test connection. And this should tell you whether or not it was able to successfully connect. So you can see that this says connection successful. So now all you do is click save. And then from there, you're going to see, and I'm just putting on now, um, you're going to see that as an option. So you see my project database is down here as a your data sources. So you can go ahead and click this guy. That has now set up what's called a data query. So all you have to do is go on here. I only do only when trigger is manually. So when I run it, that's when it's going to notify me because otherwise there's some pop-ups. Now, what you're going to do is you're just going to write a little SQL statement or a little SQL code. So that way you can query the database source that you set up. So you set up this source, right? So that's in this like drop down. So you set up this source 
and then now you just have to query it. That's what the data query, that's what the difference is between a data query and a data source. What you're gonna do from here is you're actually going to rename this query. So we'll just call this projects query. Okay, just so it's a little clearer than query one. And this was the source, right? So that source is right. We have only trigger it manually. Okay, now we're gonna run a SQL statement. So we're just gonna do select star from projects. And then we're going to run this and hopefully this will connect and pull the projects. So we click run and then it says it was run successful. So now we're gonna pull in a table component and watch this drag and drop this in and it grabs the data from the database from that query it's that easy to pull in data so that's what i really like about this is the front end and the back end like this was very seamless you can also insert let's say a form so somebody could enter in something so we could put a form above this and then we can click generate a form from one of your data sources and then click generate form. And then people can come in and enter data in here, click submit and it will change your actual database. Like it will actually add the data to your database. But how easy is that? It added the exact fields that were in as my columns of the database I just connected. It's just a very seamless way to have the backend integrated within these data queries. So I am really liking this. It's all set up, it's drag and drop. You saw how easy it was to connect to an existing database. You can go back to layout and now you have something that's actually usable and connected to your data sources and the things that you already have set up in play. Now that we had a chance to see how it kind of works in action, you might be wondering how much does all this cost? Now, Locoder actually has a different approach to pricing than traditional SaaS products that charge per user to use this application. They actually keep the community free version of Locoder so you can play around, you can build some apps, things like that, smaller versions. But if you do want additional support, you can upgrade in the subscription section and subscribe for all additional expert Locoder people who can help customize these internal tools. So if you need additional help, then you can pay for it. But if you don't, then they still have the community version. And that's what I really appreciate about Locoder because the other SaaS products are gouging you with just like $30 a month per user. It's like completely unscalable. So I find that this approach is really nice. And personally, as someone who does need help every now and again, I would click the subscribe now just to get somebody to help me up and running. And then I like that pay model more than trying to charge me per user per month. Um, so I think it's a really cool thing. They still have the community version. So hopefully that is a really nice pricing model. Now this should give you a deeper dive into Locoder now that we took a look inside, how it works, how the data works with the front end and the back end. Hopefully this should have given you a bigger picture of how you could use Locoder in your day-to-day -day business or internal apps and things like that. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions or if you liked this application, wanna see more of these applications, subscribe, put a comment below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.